I once had an atheist tell me to prove that you cannot be good without God. I guess it's time for the moral argument again. So this is a video by a guy named Chris. He's wanting to challenge any atheist who can give him a solid argument against the moral argument. So let's hear what he has to say. It goes as follows. Premise 1. If God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. Premise 2. Objective moral values and duties do exist. Therefore, 3. God exists. That was a clean and concise summation of the moral argument, Chris. I'll let you finish your thoughts before unpacking this argument and offering my response. Oh, by the way, I'm also going to be linking some articles explaining altruism and some other points that I bring up throughout the video, so keep an eye on those if you get lost. This is a simple deductive argument for God's existence. If the premises are true, the conclusion follows logically and necessarily. The atheist, to my surprise, didn't try to refute either one of the premises. However, if one cannot refute either premise, the conclusion follows that God exists. Most of the time I will find that atheists will agree with premise two, that objective moral values and duties do exist. But they will disagree with premise one, that you can have objective moral values and duties without God. The problem is they're not able to tell me why. When they try, they generally use feelings and emotions, but feelings and emotions are not objective. Or I've seen them use things such as health and well-being. But then again, that's weak because it presupposes that we ought to be concerned with health or well-being. I have not seen any atheist ever effectively refute premise one. So here is the purpose of this video. For those that believe that objective moral values and duties do exist but don't believe in God, I want to hear from you. Please don't tell me you're about to exclude moral relativists. This does not concern those who don't believe in objective moral values and duties. And there it is. I'm going to respond to the video, but I think it's entirely unfair to exclude somebody with a point of view simply because you don't like or agree with it. If your argument can stand on its own, it should stand in the face of any opinion, including that of moral relativity. Otherwise, your argument is entirely unsound. Those that see nothing objectively wrong with things like child abuse and that sort of thing, that's an entirely different monster that, quite frankly, I got no use for or interest in. If you use the moral argument for God, that monster is something you're going to have to come to terms with. Period. Again, that's whether or not you like it. Regardless of that fact, though, you're entirely misrepresenting the point of a moral relativist. So if you agree with premise two but disagree with premise one, I want to hear from you. Leave your thoughts and arguments in the comments section below, and please try to keep it professional, and please stay on task. How is morality objective if God does not exist? So... I don't believe morality is objective in the sense that it must have an ultimate guiding hand behind it, but I'll still tackle the argument, though maybe in a different way. I think we may be defining objective wrong. What's objectively good is what will allow the human species to flourish. Bear in mind that this in and of itself is relative, as it's only concerned with the well-being of humans on the whole and not necessarily with other animals on this planet directly. All right. Premise one, if God exists, moral values and duties do exist. Well, there's a few problems to unpack here already. Firstly, who's to say that objective morals aren't sharded out by a unicorn bouncing between the moon and Saturn? It sounds like nonsense, but that's exactly what it sounds like to me when you replace that unicorn with God. There's no argument that proves that God represents any kind of goodness. And if we're talking about the Judeo-Christian God or the Muslim God, I hope you don't gleam your moral values from their holy books. What if this hypothetical god is evil? What if he exists and all he did was create us in a purely deistic fashion, and therefore can have no moral values attached to him at all, as he's demonstrated none? Until a god that must provide moral guidance and must be good and must demand good of its creation can be demonstrated, 
We are only to glean any ounce of morality from a holy book, like the Bible, Quran, or the Bhagavad Gita. Allow me to return to the point of what's good for our species on the whole. Altruism is a trait demonstrated in most mammals. Us humans can demonstrate that as well, with or without coercion from any holy text. To this end, it would appear that base instincts, such as a predisposition to want to prolong one's own life, would inherently hinge on that person's ability to preserve the life of others. Personal health and wellness need not apply here. Only concerning oneself with oneself is a level of solipsism I can't understand and refuse to relate to. If every person wants the human species to propagate, not murdering a person a day would probably be in our best interest. If we don't want to be stolen from, not stealing from others is a demonstration on what we would want on ourselves, and is obviously, again, in our best interest. I covered a topic like this in my last video with a reference to a hypothetical evil Philip. If 1% of the population murdered one person per day, ignoring those who think as they do, until there are no non-murderers left, the human species would cease to exist in a matter of 100 days. If we, as a species, are to propagate and survive, which would be our evolutionary drive, the idea of you scratch my back and I scratch yours is the least we can do to allow that to happen. So, objectively speaking, I would propose that a moral is nothing more than an abstract term that equates to species-wide altruism that we can find in literally any other species. God need not apply here. On to premise two. As I stated, I don't believe in objective morals such that they are classically defined. I rather believe morals are entirely relative. Culture to culture, country to country, we see different things portrayed as objectively right or wrong. Any adherence to a single creed of any culture simply demonstrates the point that that views are in themselves relative to that culture. I personally think murder is wrong, but a psychopath might not. Our values are relative to ourselves, but only one of these sets of values can feasibly help our species continue on. I would argue that that would be mine and not the psychopaths. On to the point of child abuse. If I abuse a child, there's a plethora of problems that occur, and allow me to demonstrate a few of them. For one, if this child grows up and exacts revenge on me in the future, that's not exactly good for my health. If this child is to be useful to the human species on the whole, and have any possibility of throwing themselves into the fields of science or humanitarianism, Scarring and breaking this child will not do us any favors in continuing to provide for our species far and past our individual inevitable deaths. Any blind ignorance to the concept of the next generation's flourishing is exactly the demonstrably damning solipsism that leads a psychopath to kill. To summarize, premise one has yet to demonstrate that God is good or moral in the first place leading us to gleam objective morals from nowhere other than a vague altruism demonstrated in dogs, cats, and other fellow primates. Premise 2, therefore, follows to be a nonsense idea. Premise 1 can't even be demonstrated. I hope this answers your question, Chris. If so, or if you have a problem with anything that I said, please feel free to leave a comment explaining where you hold issue with my argument. As always, guys, thanks a ton for watching. If you liked this video, please share it around. Give it a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you didn't like the video, let me know as well. What did you think of the moral argument? Let me know in the comments below, alright guys? As always, see you guys later. Thanks for watching. On to the point of child abuse. Yes, that was a banana. <laughs> no one expects the banana.